Okay, so I've received my second Pi Zero 2W. Uh, I paid a bit more for this one. I paid $24.99 from Amazon. I put it in my community tab because at the time there just weren't any available. Um, the reason being is I've got this one, which is my original Pi Zero 2W, um, but because I'm using it with Pi Sugar, which is a battery that powers it, uh, you can't use GPIO pins on it. It uses these little holes uh, with little pins that it puts in itself uh, and it clamps on. A really good design, really clever, and this actually powers the Pi Zero 2W on its own. You don't need any mains power for that, which is really impressive. With the original Pi Zero, it actually powers my EVICV screen, seven inch screen, and the Pi Zero and attached devices. But because the new Pi Zero 2W requires 2.4 amps uh, with, with attachments plugged in, you can't use that and a screen. It was just too much draw for the battery. Anyway, back to this one. Uh, so this one has been pre-soldered uh, by a company, so it's nice and neat. Uh, compared to my soldering job on my Pico, uh, which, I mean, I am terrible at soldering, and I had a really old, terrible soldering iron. And when you look in under the microscope, it really did look bad. Anyway, I mean, it still works, but uh, it's nice to have this neater. And as I say, I needed a Pi Zero at the time, and so I paid a bit more for it. The Pi Zero 2W is uh, is pretty much the perfect product. The one thing I don't like is uh, the micro USB on it. Uh, it's just a horrible connector. And when compared to USB-C, the fact that you have to plug it in the right way around, and if you get it the wrong way around, you're at risk of breaking the terminal or breaking the cable is really bad. And also most micro USB adapters are lower power, uh, and this does use a reasonable amount of power. So rather than buy any more micro USB devices, uh, I figured I'd get these adapters, and I mentioned them in, I think, Pi News. Uh, it's basically micro USB to USB-C, so any existing adapters you've got, uh, and in the case of this is the official Raspberry Pi adapter, I can use that, and that will give me enough power, but also it means I'm not having to buy another power brick uh, when I've already got loads of USB-C devices. And from going onwards, uh, rather than buy micro USB hubs like this one, uh, which you know is, is not, not particularly well made, it's pretty flimsy and doesn't carry a lot of power. I can use much more substantial USB-C adapters. This is one that I use with my MacBook uh, and it gives me three USB ins, but it's also powered as well. So if I want to use extra storage with this, uh, then I can, and also plugging in controllers and things like that. It's not gonna draw power away from the Pi, but I can use it in an on the go fashion. Uh, and if I plug it into this connector, the one on the outside, and I've actually, on my original zero, I put a little blue dot just to tell me which one was the power adapter because I kept forgetting and plugging in the wrong one. If you plug into just the power one, you won't get any data through that. But if you plug it into this one, the second one along, try not to break the connection, uh, I can then plug my USB-C into the back of this. You can see I've already got my keyboard plugged in or mouse keyboard combo. Uh, and that's going to provide power to this when I switch it on. But also I can plug more things into here, uh, and I can add separate power to the Pi Zero if I want to in this connector. Uh, and again, I can use another one of these and use another USB-C adapter. But it works fine in this configuration with what I want to do with it at the moment. I'm just running Raspberry Pi OS, which is just booted up. So I'll switch over to screen capture. So you can see it's all running nicely. Uh, the temperature is very low because I'm using my Pi Moroni fan shim. Uh, and uh, I will do overclocking in a separate video, but not for this one. So let's see what happens in this configuration when we plug more things in. So everything is running, the power is running through this USB hub and powering the Pi Zero. So let's plug in the USB. Uh, this is an M.2 drive in an Argon case, and it's come up in File Manager. And if I try the mouse, yeah, it looks like it's working. The folders are on the desktop, so yeah, no problems here. Uh, let's plug in my four terabyte Western Digital backup drive and see what happens with that. Is that gonna crash it? There we go, so plug that one in as well. We haven't got any voltage warnings. I'm gonna switch over to screen capture now. Okay, so let's have a look at the Seagate drive first. And uh, yeah, so there'll be something like ROMs in here. So RetroPi mount, ROMs and something like Dreamcast, just to check that it's working. So how big is this? Uh, yeah, 544 megabytes. So let's copy that to the desktop. And just see if it's working normally. 
Yeah, it's working all right. I mean, I, I don't know what sort of speed it should be. It's USB 2, it's coming from a physical drive. Let's try system boot. So while it's copying that, it's accessing the M.2 drive. And it seems to be accessing that and working fine. So I think power isn't an issue because we aren't getting any, any warnings or anything. So we need to plug more things into this. So I think what I'm gonna to have to do is plug in another USB hub. So I'm gonna jack these first, just so that there's no weird errors. And all of that seems to be ejected. I'm going to delete that file because I don't need that. Oh, now I'll copy it over to something else in a minute. So I've unplugged the two drives uh, and I've plugged in this USB hub into this USB hub uh, and uh, everything's working fine. Uh, I didn't have my microphone on before, so I didn't bother putting it in this video. But when I plug this USB adapter in, it actually crashed the system and restarted. I don't think it's a power issue. I think it's just didn't like it being plugged in while it was running. Anyway, I've got my Ethernet cable in here now. Uh, so I'm using Ethernet on the Pi. Uh, so I've got, I was using Wi-Fi before. So let's start plugging some things in. Uh, so let's go again for my four terabyte drive. Uh, let's plug that in there. And if I use my, uh, I've got a Ugreen USB 3 adapter here, which is my main adapter. It's just come up on the screen and it's recognized that drive, the four terabyte drive. So now if I plug in uh, this Ugreen USB SATA adapter, but with a mechanical drive. Okay, so still seems to be running. Uh, that's, that's popped up on the screen. And one more thing, a USB 3 Arcanite USB adapter. Let's try plugging that in as well. Still not getting any power issues. Yeah, that seems to have come up. So is the mouse still working all right? It is. Let's cancel all these out uh, and open them individually. So 124 gig is my Arcanite, I think. Yeah, that's my Arcanite USB stick. So say I wanted to copy that Dreamcast game over to the Arcanite. Let's see if that works fine. With those other two drives plugged in. Yeah, that's no problem. 500 gig is um, a two and a half inch mechanical hard drive. So if I go into, uh, which one do I have on this? Recall box, one of them will have ROMs in. So it's accessing this at the same time. This is working, albeit slow. It is an old 500 gig Toshiba drive. Uh, and also <laughs> it's got loads of folders and files on it. So, you know, all that's gonna take some time. Uh, so say for instance, let's go for something like PSP. Uh, so PSP. And some of these won't be that big. God of War will be big. Gran Turismo will be big. Little Big Planet is only about 200 megabytes, I think. Uh, let's have a look. 206. So let's copy that. And let's copy that onto the Seagate drive, the four terabyte drive. And paste. It seems to be working fine. Do I plug something else in? I guess I probably ought to because I've still got one USB socket uh, on the hub. But I was fully thinking that I'd get to this point and it wouldn't be working so I'd have to power the Pi separately. But it looks like you don't have to. With uh, a decent power adapter like the official Raspberry Pi 4 adapter, it works well. So just to recap, uh, we have power going in here which is from the official Raspberry Pi 4 adapter. We've got USB going out to this three USB adapter with Ethernet in, I'm using the Ethernet at the moment. I've got my Arcanite USB stick. I've also got the mechanical two and a half inch Toshiba drive, a four terabyte backup drive as well, which is also a mechanical drive. I've got my mouse and keyboard plugged in there as well. So I've got one more space and I'm gonna plug in another mechanical drive. I only really use mechanical drives for uh, things like RetroPie, um, just because it's a cheap way of getting lots of storage. Uh, so I can't remember which one, oh, I think I've got to plug in the USB 3 adapter into this one. So I'm plugging it back into this one. Is it all gonna fail? I can hear it spin up. The mouse point has stopped working momentarily. Is that because I've got the drive in the way of it? Let's move it out of the way, because they, they really do block signals from the transmitter. All right, so it's, yeah, it's come up. Oh, something's gone off, something's clicked. 
What's happened there? Something's ah oh, right. Something definitely hasn't got enough power. Right. Okay. I'm going to shut down. That definitely is too much for something. I don't want to damage the drive. I don't know which one it was, but one of these was definitely having uh, a, a job being able to supply enough power to it. Oh, and it appears to have rebooted on its own. Uh, I'm going to add more power into here. Uh, I've got my Mac, my M1 Mac power adapter, this USB-C cable. I'm going to use one of these and I'm going to see if I can get them all working by adding a bit of extra power to the Pi itself. Oh, I think it, I think it came on. I think it powered itself up. Right, let's go off. I don't recommend turning these things on and off like this really, but it's interesting for a video. So let's turn both of those on. Power lights come on, fans come on. You can see all these lights have come on on the drives. Could even be that this uh, USB SATA, which has separate power for the drive, it could even be that it was that drive that wasn't working. I can hear one of these failing. Because you wouldn't do it on boot ordinarily. Uh, it's going to confuse things, although because there's an SD card in, uh, it's going to boot from that. Yeah, and it's booted up all right. But I can hear one of the drives struggling. So I've got 124, uh, which is the Arcanite. I've got boot and root. I don't know what that's from, the Seager. It's definitely one of the drives isn't showing up. So I think what I'm going to do is unplug this one, the Hitachi, while it's running. Uh, and then plug in a, yeah, I'm not going to use this cable. I'm going to plug in the M.2 drive because M.2 drives use a reasonable amount of power, nothing like a, a mechanical drive, I'm sure, but they definitely use more than SSDs or in the case of my tests, it seems to have. Obviously, it varies on what drive you're using. That showed up. So let's switch back into screen capture and just check everything's still working. So here's the M.2 drive, uh, these two partitions. Then I've got my four terabyte drive, and what was that I put on here? I'll, I'll just delete that off. Uh, Little Big Planet. So let's delete that. And yes, some files cannot be moved because the underlying file systems don't support this operation. Do you want to delete them instead? That's fine. Uh, so the 500 gig drive. What did I put on there? I didn't put anything on there. But let's go into that recall box just to show that it's still working. Uh, and it does take a while again because there's loads of ROMs in loads of folders and all sorts of artwork and all sorts of things in here. There's only, what, 73 gig free space on a 500 gig drive. But it does work and it always is slow um, because there's so much on here and it's running on USB 2. Uh, my Arcanite drive and I copied that Dreamcast. Let's move that to the waste basket. It is working all right with all of this plugged in. So let's go back out again and show you everything that's there. Okay, so to recap now, uh, so the original system was just running from the Pi 4 power adapter, uh, running through this USB hub, and uh, that was the only power it was getting. I've now got separate power going into the Pi, uh, and it's now powering everything that's here. So we've got a 500 gig mechanical drive, a four terabyte mechanical drive, a 128 gig USB stick, a what is it 256 m.2 drive i think it is no it could be a 128 m.2 drive uh, and a mouse and keyboard the Pimeroni fan shim and we've got ethernet going through so i'm amazed that it that it all works absolutely fine uh, and also that the the pi zero doesn't feel sluggish so uh, th things like this for you know managing i don't know photos or documents or anything like that it's surprising how well it runs Obviously, you're better off to use USB 3.0 for something like that, but uh, yeah, it still doesn't cease to amaze me. Now, I'm figuring as well, uh, what about controllers? So, say for instance, you were going to run RetroPie on this, and RetroPie runs really well on this. Uh, I mean to do a separate video. Uh, I've already like done a load of prep for it. I've seen somewhere on some of the forums about people putting extra controllers in. So, let's see if I can plug four USB controllers in uh, with RetroPie and see if that all works. Okay, so four wired controllers plugged in. Uh, so Raspberry Pi 4 adapter going into this hub uh, and that's powering the Pi uh, but I've also got my mouse and keyboard in there and I've got uh, a single controller, this Xbox controller and if I do left and right you can see it controls that uh, and then in the separate 3 USB hub still using Ethernet uh, I've got my Xbox 360 controller, an Xbox One controller 
and also an Xbox One S controller. I haven't set it up to configure it to do it individually for the games. So the Pi Zero 2 keeps impressing me. It is such a good system for the money. Um, but also definitely worth having these adapters. So USB-C to micro USB. Uh, this USB-C hub has been brilliant. I don't think I paid very much for it. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but uh, that's going to give you three connections. That's probably enough for most people. Um, but also things like this USB. Uh, so that's an extra three connections. Uh, well, I suppose it's an extra two connections, really, because you're taking one out of here. Uh, and then you've got an Ethernet connection on there as well. So, uh, yeah, really pleased with that. Hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.